1155. Why, if we break the stem of a hyacinth, do we see a glutinous fluid exude? Because by breaking the stem, we rupture the vessels of the plant and cause the nutritive fluid to escape. The sap of the plant is analogous to the blood of man and the vessels to the arteries and veins of the animal body. 1156. Why, if we split the petal of a tulip, do we see cells containing matter of various colors? Because by splitting the petal of the flower, we disclose the anatomy of its structure and bring to view those cells or organs of the vegetable body by which the different coloring matters are secreted. 1157. Why, if we break a pea shell across, do we discover a transparent membrane which may be removed from the green cells underneath? Because we separate from the cellular or fleshy part of the shell the membrane which forms the epidermis and answers to the skin of the animal body. 1158. Why, if we cut through a cabbage stump, do we find an outer coat of woody fiber and an inner substance of cellular matter? Because the woody fiber forms a kind of skeleton which supports the internal structure of the plant and gives form and character to its organization. The woody fiber of plants is analogous to the bony structure of animal bodies. 1159. Why, if we cut across the stem of a plant, do we see numerous tubes arranged in parallel lines? Because we thereby bring to view the vessels formed by the membranes and fibers of the vegetable body for the transmission of the fluids by which the structure is sustained. It was planted in a good soil by great waters, that it might bring forth branches, and that it might bear fruit, that it might be a goodly vine. Ezekiel 17. Skeleton leaves and seed vessels of plants form exceedingly interesting objects and serve to illustrate the wonderful structure of plants. With patience and care, they may be produced by any person and will afford an interesting occupation. The leaves should be gathered when they are in perfection, that is, when some of the earliest leaves begin to fall from the trees. Select perfect leaves, taking care that they are not broken or injured by insects. Lay them in pans of rainwater and expose them to the air to undergo decomposition. Renew the water from time to time, taking care not to damage the leaves. They need not be examined more than once a week, and then only to see that the water is sufficient to cover them. Give them sufficient time for their soft parts to become decomposed, then take them out, and laying them on a white plate with a little water, wash away carefully with a camel hair pencil the green matter that clings to the fibers. The chief requirement is patience on the part of the operator to allow the leaves and seed vessels sufficient time to decompose. Some leaves will take a few weeks, and others a few months but a large panful may be put to decompose at the same time, and there will always be some ready for the process of cleansing. When they are thoroughly cleaned, they should be bleached by steeping for a short time in a weak solution of chloride of lime. They should then be dried and either pressed flat or arranged in bouquets for preservation under glass shades. The result will amply reward the perseverance of the operator. 1160. Why are clayey soils unfavorable to vegetation? Because the soil is too close and adhesive to allow of the free passage of air or water to the roots of the plants, it also obstructs the expansion of the fibers of the roots. 1161. Why are sandy soils unfavorable to vegetation? Because they consist of particles that have too little adhesion to each other. They do not retain sufficient moisture for the nourishment of the plants, and they allow too much solar heat to pass to the roots. 1162. Why are chalk soils unfavorable to vegetation? Because they do not absorb the solar rays and are therefore cold to the roots of plants. 1163. Why are mixed soils favorable to vegetation? Because they contain the elements of nutrition essential to the development.